So when I hit the road after spending time home for the holidays, I noticed something. There was a whole lot less room and a whole lot more stuff in my van. My cabinets are so full that now when I open them, the onions fall out. The space beneath my bed is jam-packed and there is a mountain of overflow in my passenger seat. So if van life is supposed to look like this, then why does mine look like this? Huh? I like how I'm like getting mad at you as if it's your fault. As if I didn't do this to myself. Oh God. What am I gonna do about all this stuff? Oftentimes living in a house encourages you to get more, to populate the empty spaces of your home. And while you still do that to a certain degree when living in a van, it's usually only in the very beginning. And then you spend the rest of that time trying to do the exact opposite, simplify. So let's do a little visualization real quick. Pretend you're a 26 year old half Japanese, half Australian male who lives in his van and has perfectly straight teeth. Okay, maybe that last part was wishful thinking. Anyways, you buy a new blender and bring it home. See, now if you were in an actual house, you could just throw it in one of your 30 cabinets. Done. But that would just be too easy now, wouldn't it? Quinoa, one loaf of bread, two loaves of bread, apples. Giant bag of nuts, more nuts. Why are there so many nuts? Do you guys remember how last week's video, I said I was cleaning out my dad's house and getting ready for it to sell? Well, I picked up some things there that I probably just should have let go, but I don't want to be wasteful. Now they're in here. Do you know how long it's going to take me to eat all of these? Aha! The old blender. The dying a slow, painful, noisy, kind of smelly death blender. So now I can fit this in here. Now I just have to deal with all of this. Well, we can start with the onion. So now I have this blender floating around in here. Uh, just like all the other things that I need to get rid of. Uh, so now that this doesn't have a place in the cupboard anymore, I guess it will just uh, join the pile of other things. Just look at this. Just take a look. See, this is just like an actual mountain of things that I need to deal with that are just taking up space in my van. And the only thing that I really care about in here right now is my guitar is actually living under all of this. And if there's too much stuff in my front seat for me to get my guitar, then it means that I don't play it. And if I don't play my guitar, then that means there's too much stuff in the front seat. And if a tree falls in the forest, does it make a sound? And the answer is yes, obviously. Just like if I yell because there's so much clutter in my van, but there's nobody around, you can still hear it. It seems that whether we like it or not, van life is inextricably linked to minimalism. You can't live in a tiny home with too much stuff and reasonably maintain your sanity. You only have room for a certain amount of items. Take for example, the most popular minimalism analogy of all, the closet. So pretty much the entirety of my clothing lives right here. Uh, it's not a lot, but I feel like I have a lot more clothes than I need to live in the van. Um, so everything's in here in little packing cubes. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 shirts. So I don't know, I feel like 12 shirts for months of wearing is probably healthy. Healthier than whatever's going on in the rest of my van, I guess. I don't have the luxury of, of bringing a whole bunch of things just because I'm attached to them or because I like them. If they're not like practical, if they're not useful, if I'm not gonna actually wear them, then they're just gonna take up space. And I sit here and I say that as if I uh, am perfect at doing that, when really right behind you, we can see that all of my sweaters and stuff are taking over a different corner of the van. So clearly I'm not as good at this as I uh, might seem on the surface. Uh, if there's any real minimalists out there that want to just like destroy me in the comments, please feel free. <laughs> I don't claim to be a minimalist. I never have. 
I'm just analyzing how I'm kind of being forced to look at my life through that lens despite never having really had those practices uh, before. And I think it's good. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying the part where I get to pare down my stuff uh, a whole lot more than I'm enjoying the part where I'm being burdened by them. Yeah. Here's a prime example. Over the holidays, my mom got me a new pair of boots for Christmas. They're super swanky and laceless and wonderful, and I'm super grateful to have received such a nice gift. But it presented one problem. I was already in a committed relationship with these. They were my everyday wear. If it was hiking, shooting, going out to dinner, they were probably on my feet. They were perfectly worn in, they fit me like a glove, but the soles were kind of ripping off the bottom, so uh, I made the tough decision to leave them behind. If only I could have done that with all the other crap that's in my van right now. In light of this overcrowding I'm dealing with, I've started to give more thought and intentionality to the things I allow to occupy the space with me. So perhaps I'm not the person to be talking about having things with intentionality, but I'm doing a better job to only bring things in here that are really going to like give me value or, or help me out in some kind of way. And they're not gonna, I don't know, make my life more difficult. Uh, so one of the things that I did recently install, and I know, oh no, I'm so, I'm so authentic, I'm so genuine, I'm so original, I just came up with this all myself magnetic spice jars. Every van probably has it, uh, but I think that it's just so amazing because all of this stuff used to take up space inside of my cabinet. And now that I have them out here, not only is it colorful and does it look nice and is it convenient, but now I have all this space in there that I can clutter with other things. I think that the difficult part isn't being intentional with what you bring in, it's actually being discerning with what you already have. In 1897, Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto observed that 20% of the pea pods in his garden were responsible for 80% of his actual yield in peas. He then realized that this kind of disparity was evident all over the place. In Italy, roughly 20% of people owned 80% of the land, or 80% of a business's profits were driven by 20% of their customers. This observation came to be known as Pareto's principle, or the 80-20 principle. And while the ratio of 80-20 is by no means absolute and varies in proportions, it highlights something important. That upon close inspection, there's a dichotomy between the vital few and the trivial many. I'm no expert on the topic, but I would venture as far as to say that this is one of the core tenets of minimalism. Less, but better. So we are headed into town because I am going to get rid of a couple of things. I've sold some things that I need to get rid of and some other things are going to go to donate. So let's get out of here. All right. So I've sold these two things, three things. So. It'll be a little bit easier to get to my guitar now. Okay, you need your receipt? Uh, no, thank you. And I also have uh, this other thing that goes to it as well. Well, it's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better already. Being in a van amplifies how beholden to our possessions we are and gives us two options. Physically trip over all of your stuff or let it go. I recently learned that inactivity is a decision in and of itself. By doing nothing, we're making a trade-off. By not relinquishing things that no longer serve us, we are allowing them to hinder us. By hanging on to that extra sweatshirt, I'm saying yes to being able to be orange whenever I want, but no to a clean and orderly cavernous hole cubby that I still haven't done anything with.
It's a lot less stuff to wash if I just get out of this. Hmm. First blend, success. So this isn't to say that just by making this video that I've somehow reached van minimalism nirvana or something. But I have begun to be more critical of the things that I have and that I bring into this space and whether or not they're helping or hindering me. Because sometimes it feels like the stuff is weighing on me like an anchor and I wonder who's really the owner then. Uh, so I will continue my journey of simplifying because uh, as Rolf Potts, the author of Vagabonding, once said, neither self nor wealth can be measured in terms of what you consume or own. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.